something really stupid again. Do you want to know what it is? This is Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville. It's a restaurant started by singer-songwriter Jimmy Buffett based on his 1977 song Margaritaville. They've got fried food, Jimmy Buffett's music blasting 24-7, and of course, margaritas. It is a ridiculous restaurant and one of the strangest reasons that an entire business empire could exist. And for that reason, I drove almost 10,000 miles to go to all 22 locations in the United States and Canada. Here we go again. Our first Margaritaville was located right in the center of Hollywood, California at Universal City Walk Mall. When I arrived here, there was an entire premiere going on for the new Fast and Furious movie, which was interesting, but I'm here to go to Margaritaville. And you may be wondering to yourself, Ted, after everything you went through on the Rainforest Cafe trip, why would you go on a trip like this again? Here's what happened. Last year, when we were finishing our final Rainforest Cafe, we noticed that there was a Margaritaville in Las Vegas as well. So a joke between us became that next year we would go to every Margaritaville Margaritaville in the United States. And we laughed and we laughed at the thought, and then that concept ate away at us for the next six months. So Eddie and I joined forces again, ready to learn about this new restaurant. We were sat with our send-off crew in a boat design booth where I got to take in our first stop. It had a very clear tropical motif going on, with palm trees and a painted blue sky. But my concern began when I noticed that the animals were not moving. Do they not have animatronics here? Our booth even had a TV that was playing what I could only assume to be Jimmy Buffett propaganda, I guess. Not only that, there was a notice lack of thunderstorms in this restaurant. It's been 20 minutes. Where, where's the... There should be a, like a thunderstorm right now. I don't do that here, bud. Why, why are we here? So we ordered our very first margaritas of this journey, and I was feeling a culture shock, to say the least. And strangest of all, it seemed like Eddie was having a good time. Well, I guess I'll try to stay positive then. After finishing our first Margaritaville, we went to bed to prepare to drive to every single other location of this restaurant. God help us all. And we'd be doing that driving in my 2002 Toyota Tacoma. Just kidding, we got a rental. Listen, last time we had some bumps along the road, like my Tacoma, breaking down twice, and we had to consider what would be more reasonable. I had to break the news to the old girl, though. Nothing's gonna happen, okay? What do you mean? It's a rental. I don't even know its license plate number. Okay, language. The moment of truth. There was no question whether or not it was going to work. <laughs> but yeah, with the, with the old Tacoma, it was like, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Our next Margaritaville was located all the way in San Antonio, Texas, so we had a lot of ground to cover before that. So we drove 373 miles from Los Angeles to Phoenix, Arizona. We made it to Phoenix. You know what they say, what happens in Phoenix? I don't know, because I've never spent time here. And on day two, we had to drive 430 miles to El Paso, Texas. This drive was pretty boring. That is, of course, until we started seeing billboards for something referred to as The Thing. We're on our way right now to see The Thing. We're thinking it might be like just a man that they found. Just some kind of funny guy. I'm looking for a goblin or a grimly. I want to see something fucked up. We're in the middle of nowhere in Arizona. We're about to figure out what the thing is. The interior of this place was like your average roadside gift shop for tourists until we found the museum. This museum was absolutely ridiculous. They would ask important questions like, what if dinosaurs were ruled by aliens from another planet? We had stumbled upon the greatest and the dumbest museum in the middle of nowhere. They had entire lore on these aliens. They had life-size sculptures of these guys too. Oh, nice. And I don't know who designed these alien sculptures, but they made them kind of sexy, which was distracting. God, oh, oh, oh my God. Getting turned on in this museum. Turns out the aliens were secretly controlling all of human history. Great. Cool. Oh, jeez. Then they just started pulling connections from everywhere. The Loch Ness Monster, Bigfoot, Illuminati, the Easter Island heads, a picture of the Twin Towers. I hope this isn't implying what I think it is. And at the end of the museum, we finally got to figure out what the thing was. And that was this. I mean, it's a paper mache doll, essentially. Um, you want to get out of here? Yes. So we finished our drive to El Paso, admittedly slightly more confused than when we started. On day three, we finally made it to the location of our second Margaritaville in San Antonio, Texas. This Margaritaville was located at the coolest and only place that I've been to in San Antonio, the Riverwalk. And we'd be joined here by a friend. 
How the hell are you? Are you excited? Do you want to go? That's right, Schlatt's joining us for our second Jimmy Buffett experience. The first thing I noticed was the massive blender they had right when you walked in. Ten bucks, you can't finish that. Ten? Is it drinkable? Or? We got sat down in the far corner of this restaurant, and I don't know what happened here, but I am suspicious that this is where Jimmy Buffett waterboards people. Also, our table was decorated with multiple iterations of the same photo of Jimmy Buffett on a paddleboard, which was kind of funny. Then it was time for our next margarita. I got the Beach Club, which was a massive sandwich, and I kind of had a hard time determining where the sandwich actually split. Eddie ordered fish and chips, and they unfortunately did not look very good. Hey, Eddie, I cooked those up in my microwave the other night. We even got a cute little family photo taken of us. Look at that. Still so full of joy I was. So we said our goodbyes to this Margaritaville. Then we strolled along the river walk, and along the way, we actually stumbled upon an old friend. The Rainforest Cafe. Oh, hey, it's the Rainforest Cafe. You remember that one from uh, San Antonio? Yeah. Hey, there was a tiger, I think, in that. Hey. We gotta, we gotta go. We left San Antonio to drive to Austin, Texas to crash at Schlatt's place because tomorrow we had to keep heading east. Bye, Schlatt. Bye, Schlatt. Bye, Schlatt. Bye. Thank See you. you. Thank you so much. Okay. You guys gotta get the fuck out of here. No, we can, we can stick around and be like, a, it'll be like a fun day. Oh, okay. Yep. All right. So we departed from Austin on our way to New Orleans where we'd be staying the night. Wait, wait, wait. Oh my God, he's back. We were passing by my favorite beaver themed gas station, Bucky's, and you know we had to stop. I was almost losing my mind with excitement rolling up to this paradise. And walking in, it was just as glorious as I remember. It was a madhouse in here. And they still had everything. Fresh fruit, tote bags, jerky. It was overwhelming. Party supplies, river tubes, delicious brisket. I was losing my mind. A sausage on a stick? The beaver? owns the banks? What the fuck is a beaver nugget? My love for mascots. My love for theme. Oh god, it's happening again. You got a problem, dude. What are you talking about? You're buying party hats and party napkins? This is a really clean napkin. Would you like to try? So most napkins are clean when you buy it. This is a Bucky certified napkin, as in it's it's certified to clean the mess you make when you eat a delicious Bucky sandwich. Oh, so like what any napkin would be. I don't know about the other napkin, okay? I haven't heard about the other napkin. There's a huge market of other napkins. Why name one brand of napkins other than Bucky's napkins. I don't know a single <laughs> napkin brand name. We traveled about 90 miles to Biloxi, Mississippi for our next location. And you're about to learn, I wasn't lying when I said that Jimmy Buffett had created an entire business empire from this single song. Because in addition to Margaritaville, you've got Cheeseburger in Paradise Restaurant, Land Shark Bars, a beer of the same name, frozen drink machines, portable tailgate grills, apparel, drinkware, and as we're seeing for the first time in Biloxi, Margaritaville Resorts. For the purpose of this trip, as long as these resorts contain or are close to a Margaritaville, we'll be staying at them. Arriving here, we were confronted with the true scale of this empire that Jimmy had built. Everything in this resort was Margaritaville. They even had a Margaritaville coffee shop in the lobby, and upon entering our room, we were assaulted with more island vibes. There was even quotes from Jimmy Buffett in the elevators. Quite the poet, this guy. He really just knows how to say something that like, doesn't really mean anything, but also means everything. We had to travel through a massive arcade as well, but we eventually found our way to Margaritaville number three. We were sat next to this volcano type structure that doubled as a rock wall people could climb on, which was interesting. This time I ordered a tropical fruit margarita, which I did not expect to be a slushie. And just when we thought this would be another average dinner, without any warning, alarm bells rang and the volcano began to expel smoke. I could feel myself having flashbacks to the thunderstorms from the Rainforest Cafe. But all of that changed and reality set in when the volcano played this sound effect. What the fuck was that? And then immediately after, the restaurant begins blasting the song Margaritaville as we sit in a green haze of confusion. Okay then. Another perk we got when booking this resort was some preloaded arcade credits for downstairs. But since the arcade was about to close, we only each had time to play a single game. Needless to say, it wasn't very hard for me to figure out which game I'd be playing. Minions. We 
are about to hit a storm, and I don't know how it's going to affect me, because we are getting closer to what I would call the Jimmy Buffett Florida Margaritaville Tropical Supercluster. What does that mean, Wap? There is a total of six Margaritavilles in Florida. One might consider this to be the base of Jimmy Buffett's power. I don't know what's going to happen to me. I'm already struggling a little bit. There's no animatronic animals. There's no thunderstorms. I don't understand what I'm supposed to like about this place. What, Jimmy Buffett? He's just a guy. Either way, we're hitting the road again. Wish me luck. So I held my breath as we drove into the storm for our first Margaritaville of this supercluster in Destin, Florida. This Margaritaville was different than any of the previous ones we'd seen, as it had the most tropical feeling location. That doesn't even look like it should operate as a boat. In terms of being considered a themed restaurant, though, I was not impressed. It was basically just a beach bar. But hey, another margarita and things hadn't gotten too bad yet. You know what could be fun for the video? Mashing 10 of these and then driving. That sounds like a really, really bad idea. Yeah, not all my ideas are good. You're gonna have to get used to it. I don't know what came over me, but I ended up ordering chicken tenders while Eddie ordered salmon, which resulted in our meals looking like Eddie was my well-adjusted father and I was his son that refused to eat anything that was not orange. We got in the car at just the right moment because it immediately started just like pouring. We did it, we're out of the rain. Eddie's very similar to a witch, it'll start to melt. Sometimes I, I ride around on a broom and I go, <laughs> You can't fly, so it's just kind of like you basically hobby horsing around. Yeah, but you have to bring that up to everybody. You gotta just fucking tell the world that I can't fly. I can't fucking believe you, I'm man. sorry. Start the I'm car. sorry, I'm sorry. Which way? Stop! Next up was the Margaritaville in Panama City Beach, Florida. This location was maybe five times as busy as the previous one. So to get seated, we sat at the bar. At this point, I was already getting exhausted. There were so many animals in this Margaritaville, and none of them were animatronics. And then, even though I was full, I ordered more food? I don't know what was going through my head. I think I thought I, it would give me more energy, but I just regretted it after. I continued to eat. I ate more artichoke dip. I don't know why I did that. Then we drove to our hotel for the night and got to enjoy maybe the most beautiful sunset I had ever seen. You know, my problems with the Margaritavilles were growing already, but I'm not gonna lie and say that this wasn't a really nice moment. It was so pretty. I don't even know how else to explain it. It was just gorgeous. It was beautiful. It was wonderful. Tomorrow we'd continue into Florida's super cluster, but at this point, we now officially had... Five done. <laughs> <laughs> On day seven, we had to drive the entire length of Florida in a single day to our next Margaritaville in Hollywood, Florida. And we had an increasing worry that, judging by the rain clouds, Florida was not going to make it easy for us. Oh my God. This rain came down on us as if it was a message from the rainforest gods that we were committing high treason. This is ridiculous. In all of my years of driving, I had not dealt with rain like this. Whenever it was pelting down on us, we dropped to like 50 feet of visibility in seconds. It also made me a bit nervous because I had packed most of my clothing in the back of the truck, which was only protected by a tarp. Hope that doesn't go badly. This rain would haunt us all the way until we reached our destination, the Hollywood, Florida Margaritaville Resort. Now, I was expecting this resort to be the same island-themed kitsch as Biloxi, but then we walked into the lobby. This was the fanciest hotel I'd ever been to, and also giant flip-flop. It's you, Bigfoot looking ass, Sasquatch Come on, motherfucker. Man. This hotel was so massive that they gave us a map, which we had to use to find our six Margaritaville. It's a labyrinth in here, and Jimmy Buffett might be the Minotaur. We eventually found the restaurant, and I could feel this one weighing down on me. More boats, Jimmy Buffett music, this plane again. I keep seeing this plane. We opened up our meal with yet another margarita, and it turns out this Margaritaville was the first fancy Margaritaville we would run into, and I know that sounds like weird and contradictory, but the menu was significantly different than what we were used to. We got ceviche, which was honestly really good, and also these poke nachos, and I know that I'm suspicious of Jimmy Buffett, but these were good, and not good in the sense of them being like mere acceptable, these were really good. Which was emotionally and logically confusing for me, so I continued to drink. Eddie was beginning to show some interesting symptoms at this point. He was dancing, he was sipping on the margs, he was feeling the, I guess, island vibes? You're telling me that Eddie, rainforest hater Burback, is enjoying himself at Margaritaville? Something was happening to Eddie, a metamorphosis of some kind. What are you doing to my boy, Jimmy? What do you have planned? I guess we'll figure it out sooner or later. We woke up that morning to yet another double Margaritaville day, the first of which was in Miami, Florida. I don't know if I can continue seeing Jimmy Buffett's face. Yeah, you kind of have to, so. I'll go like this, I'll say, I don't wanna see you, I don't wanna see you, Jimmy. Oh, I don't wanna see you. That. I'm just confused how you don't, you have a problem with seeing Jimmy's music videos or concert, but you like animatronics screaming in your face. But they're not speaking English. 
Is that the problem? This Margaritaville was a pretty basic location. I got a blueberry pomegranate margarita, which was incredibly sugary. But this Margaritaville was not the most significant location that we'd be hitting today, as we would be heading even further south from Miami. In fact, we'd be heading as far south as anyone could possibly drive in the United States. We were going to Key West, Florida, the southernmost point in the United States. We're going to have to drive across an entire series of bridges. It's an ocean highway. And we were a bit nervous about what the rain situation would be like, given the lightning we had seen the night before, and the fact that we were driving behind a truck with a video game amount of propane tanks on it. But we drove it. For people who are not fans of bridges, this would not be the drive for you, because the majority of this drive involved us being on a bridge over water. If you zoomed out, it looked like we were driving in the ocean. And after two hours of driving between islands and bridges, we finally made it to Key West. Location of the original Margaritaville. Margaritaville Prime. That is, of course, if you don't include the attempted Margaritaville in Gulf Shores, Alabama, that was allegedly more like a club? We're gonna keep that just between us. Either way, here we are, Margaritaville Prime. On first impressions, you could absolutely tell this was the original Margaritaville. It was even like a GTA loading screen of young Jimmy Buffett painted on the wall, which for some reason, Eddie was implying looked like him. It doesn't. We got yet again another margarita. And as I was slowing down in my enthusiasm for this animatronicless place, it, it appeared that Eddie was having a grand old time. He even convinced me to purchase a Margaritaville shirt with him. When in Rome, I suppose. So we left that Margaritaville and checked into our third Margaritaville resort. This one was definitely chiller than Hollywood. It had more of like a motel type setup to the building. They gave us a free margarita when we checked in. We were walking away and the lady was like, don't forget your free margarita. I thought it was a joke. They were not joking. We're getting drunk tonight. Okay. I need a dramatic walk off. We headed down to the beach of Key West to decompress after a long day of Jimmy Buffett nonsense. As we sat there on the beach pondering the trip thus far, I could feel my sanity slipping. And also, what was wrong with Eddie? He seemed so carefree, unaffected by Margaritaville's lack of animatronic animals, thunderstorms, and ambient monkey noises. And even more so, what was going on with me? I'm the one supposed to be having fun, living in the joy of these restaurants, but it's just not the same. Looking out over the crystal waters of Key West, I could almost see my long lost friends. The Rainforest Cafe mascots, the Wild Bunch, Cha-Cha the Tree Frog, Tuki the Elephant, Bomba the Gorilla, I feel so lost without your guidance. I had no idea what they'd think of this Jimmy Buffett I was spending so much time with. Would they hate me? Was I betraying the Rainforest Cafe on this trip? I don't know, what made Margaritaville so great? Could there really be a themed restaurant just about a guy? I don't know, and I don't know if I was ready to trust him yet. I can probably survive more Margaritavilles, and admittedly, it's nice to see Eddie happy. And we only have like, well, let me see how many have. Oh, fuck. There's 15 more? <laughs> We made it to Orlando, Florida, where we would check into our next Margaritaville hotel. And back when we booked this, Eddie managed to get one of the last hotel rooms before they booked up. And the only other types of rooms that were available was their cottages. Now, I had no idea what this meant. Cottages at a Margaritaville resort? Little did I know, I would be walking into the dystopian manifestation of Margaritaville. This was not simply a collection of cottages. These were no cabanas, no Lincoln Log cabins. This was a suburb in the town of Margaritaville in the county of Tequila. Pastel colored houses lined the streets. It was so picture perfect, I thought I was in Nuketown. And if things went south, I might need to hide in a fridge. That's an Indiana Jones reference. Not only that, but when I checked in, they upgraded my cottage, so I got a house. I became worried that I'd never make it out of this town. Like I was trapped in some Twilight Zone alternate reality. So I ran amongst this picturesque village. It was a labyrinth of tropical nightmares pastel colors, margaritas, quotes from Jimmy Buffett everywhere I turned. I was trapped. There was no way out. Purgatory was here. I was stuck in Jimmy Buffett hell. I was trapped in this purgatory for at least a full 24 hours, but I'm not even sure. The minutes turned into hours and time just became a construct. Oh, cool new merch. Wow, look at this fashionable stuff. This makes purgatory almost better. Wow, look at that. You're telling me all this stuff is available right now at Ted.Store? Oh my goodness gravy. Oh my goodness gravy, that's pretty cool. Ooh, look at that shirt. Hope people head over to Ted.Store to get some cool freaking merch. But yeah, I'm in purgatory and I wasn't sure how long I'd remain here.
That is until day 11, where I managed to escape this purgatory to rejoin Eddie at the Florida Universal CityWalk Margaritaville for our final location of this exhausting Florida supercluster. This Margaritaville was absolutely massive. I'm surprised they could fit this much in one place. They had a collection of sea animals hanging from the ceiling, which tragically were not moving or making a sound. I'm starting to think that these were innocent animatronics that Jimmy hunted for his own nefarious reasons. Another margarita ordered, and I think I'm starting to lose my mind. Not only that, but this Margaritaville had the interesting addition of people on stilts, making balloon animals for customers. I'm not sure how this relates to Jimmy Buffett at all. Maybe they just wandered in and nobody's doing anything about it. I think it might be an it because that's not the size of a normal person. That's way too small. What do you think about dehumanizing people on stilts? Dehumanizing them? Oh yeah, your legs aren't like that. You don't deserve to have a driver's license or a home. Based on the menu, it appears that Jimmy likes to create strange chimeras of food, such as the nacho burger or the loaded baked potato soup. So I kept it safe and I got fish tacos. Upon finishing at this location, we would depart Universal and I was getting pretty excited for this because it was finally time to escape the clutches of the Florida supercluster. See you later, you demonic suburb. I hate you. So Eddie and I departed to head further north, driving all the way from Orlando, Florida to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, where tomorrow we'd be hitting our next Margaritaville. But before that, this video is sponsored by SoFi. When I was going into college, there was a lot I had to figure out and getting a student loan was probably one of the more stressful ones. Private student loans from SoFi are here to give students the financial freedom they need to pursue their educational goals. And SoFi offers competitive interest rates that can help you save money over the life of your loan. They understand that every student's financial situation is unique, which is why they provide flexible repaying options that fit your budget. If you're worried about qualifying, over 75% of SoFi student loan borrowers have a cosign. Adding one increases your approval chances and can help qualify applicants for lower student loan rates. My dad cosigned on my student loan. And SoFi offers tons of support to help you through the process. From a paying for college hotline where folks can set up calls with their specialists, to a wealth of videos and articles specifically for college students, to even a monthly scholarship. SoFi's not just here for student loans either. They've got checking, savings, credit tracking, investing, and so much more. Learn about financing your education at SoFi.com com slash Ted Nivison. It only takes three minutes to apply online and there's no impact on your credit score to see your rate. Plus, new borrowers can even get a 0.25% discount on the rate until August 31st. Thanks again, SoFi, for sponsoring this video and let's get back to it, baby. This Margaritaville was located at a place called Heroes Harbor. It's sort of like we're kind of heroes for doing this, you know? When my tummy hurts from eating too much Margaritaville, I think I deserve a purple heart. And at this point, I'd been trying to keep an open mind, but entering another Margaritaville, which by the way, we were doing on a Tuesday, was filling me with a new type of dread I had never felt before. Is this what Eddie felt like on the rainforest trip? No, that, no, that can't be right. This is different. I ordered a perfect margarita, which is the normal margarita, because I just could not handle the sugar content of any of their other drinks at this time. And I decided to take the adult route and order some salmon to give me a semblance of sanity. Now we are on our way with Lana to go to another Margaritaville. Fuck. So we headed to Atlanta, Georgia for our second Margaritaville of the day. Everything was going swimmingly. We were making good time on our drive. That is until disaster struck. As we were driving down the highway, we eventually would hit standstill traffic. And this delayed us for a very long time. This was not good because we had to make it to our next Margaritaville tonight in Atlanta. Eventually we started moving again, but we had lost a lot of time. So we called and confirmed that the kitchen would be closing at 11 p.m., which was awesome. So we finished our drive to Atlanta and walked over to Margaritaville to eat, only then to find out the kitchen had closed an hour early because they weren't as busy. This was a huge problem because even though the bar was still open, Eddie's goal is to eat at every Margaritaville, so it wouldn't count if we didn't eat here. And we'd be departing from Atlanta tomorrow hours before they'd open again. So if we couldn't eat here tonight, the whole trip would need to be rescheduled. All of the bookings that we made, everything. I didn't really know what else to do in this situation, so I made a gamble. I walked inside and I met with the manager and I said in full honesty, hey, this is gonna sound really, really weird, but me and my friend are going to every Margaritaville in the United States. We really need to eat here tonight because we're leaving early tomorrow morning before you guys open. Is there anything that you can do to help us out? It could just be some chips, literally anything, as long as we eat here at Cat's. And to my absolute delight, she says, I got you. So she goes back into the kitchen as the restaurant is closing and starts preparing some food for us. We didn't even know what they were making for us either. It was a mystery. But at this moment, we were in disbelief that they were even helping us out in the first place. And after a little bit of waiting in shock, they brought out the food and it was beyond anything we could have expected. They made us a full set of ribs with fries and chips with some artichoke dip. They even gave us each a margarita. And this food tasted better than anything I had eaten on this trip. The ribs were fall off the bone. The fries tasted like 
like pure kindness. The margarita was infused with joy. We were blown away with just the pure kindness that was displayed to us in this moment. And we left that restaurant and just felt so grateful specifically to this manager for helping us out. We will now continue to go onward to our next margarita bills. No delay. No delay. Without any delay, we reached the Nashville, Tennessee Margaritaville, located right in the center of Nashville. And this Margaritaville took on some of the city's identity, like a person playing live country music in the restaurant. But despite the wonderful moment yesterday, I was still struggling with how many we had gone to. I mean, a big part of it was the lack of safari fries. Just put safari in front of fries and I'm gonna be good. But you can't do that, Jimmy, can you? And the persistence of Jimmy Buffett to put his plane, the hemisphere dancer, in most of the locations was starting to make me mad. Like, we get it, Jimmy. You own a plane, good for you you, man. Oh, what, the restaurants and resorts and tailgate grill weren't enough? You need a rub in that you own a plane, Jimmy? The nerve of this guy. After leaving Nashville, we drove 213 miles to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. And I'd never been to Pigeon Forge before, so I was confused. When everything around us turned into weird gimmicky businesses and something called a dinner feud? The fuck is a dinner feud? Is that a business where you go fight people during dinner? This strange town is where we'd reach our second to last Margaritaville resort. Upon checking in, it was funny to see all of the Margaritaville decorations, but with a clear Tennessee twist to the design. Changes in latitudes, changes in attitudes, brother. We even got a license to chill. It's engraved uh, into the wood. I'm so worried, dude. Thank God. Can you imagine if we wanted to chill and we don't? I wasn't, gonna, cool. I wasn't that worried about so it. So we walked across the street to eat at our 13th Margaritaville. Another margarita, some more food, and the only thing notable about this Margaritaville was the strange contraption they had, which I assumed was supposed to fill the blender with margarita, but nothing happened the whole time we were there. I was bummed, too. I was looking for some spectacle for once. <laughs> On day 15, we had a big driving day. We departed Tennessee and drove more than 600 miles to a hotel outside of Philadelphia. And on day 16, we got ready to have- Two Margaritaville meals today from, you know, our favorite restaurant, the, the most chill place on earth. That's not, that's know, not true. By your boy, Jimmy the you, Bee, oh. Jimmy Buffett. Uh-huh. You know, greatest American singer-songwriter to ever grace this earth. I don't know what's happening to you right now. This Beef is- Burger in Paradise. Yeah, no, we've had it. Margaritaville. Uh-huh. Um, his other songs. <laughs> Our first stop of the day was in Atlantic City, New Jersey, which is sort of like the Vegas of the Northeast. And normally I would not make that distinction, but in order to reach the Margaritaville, we had to walk through an entire... I'm riding my luck, I'm taking my chances. Casino. So we reached the Margaritaville and Eddie was behaving even stranger. I guess he's trying to be cool or chill. I'm not sure what he's going for here. He also was looking at the menu like he was seeing it for the first time and not the 14th consecutive time in 16 days. But hey, another margarita, another round of the same themeless food. Eddie tried to steal some of mine like a little rat. We got another photo taken of us. I'm clearly having the time of my life. Look at me, I'm so happy. And after we finished, as is customary, a quick touch to the Atlantic Ocean, and then it was time to move on. We're on our way to the next Margaritaville. Number 15, you know. I just didn't understand how Eddie could be having such a good time. To be honest, it was kind of pissing me the fuck off. I don't know who he was becoming, but it was clear he had a very different view of Jimmy Buffett than me. Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, I didn't know that about him. Wow. What are you doing? Sorry? What are you doing? I'm just very interested in my Jimmy Buffett book. You're Tales from Margaritaville, like... New York Times bestseller. Oh yeah, no, I, I know about it. You've been reading it for like two days straight, but you're making a show of it. You're, you're eating just it up right now. What you're talking about. Ted, you just gotta learn to go with the flow of things, you know? Oh, go with the tides. I, you don't, okay. Sometimes the water comes in and you just gotta go in with it. Sometimes That's called a riptide. Riptide or not. It's all gonna be good. Ted. I just am kind of confused on why you didn't give this sort of energy when we were going to every rainforest cafe. You don't understand why I'm enjoying going to beautiful beaches rather than going to a beautiful forest? Ball. You need to tell me exactly what I should like so much about these experiences at Margarita. No animatronic screaming in your face. Okay, there that's I, a negative. Did, you just gotta do what I've been doing. Not having a problem at all and not totally freaking out and just being chill and not freaking out and well, trying to figure out what you're all these things. It. And it wasn't just Eddie that was acting weird because I think these restaurants are doing something to me as well. Oh, jeez. Oh. Despite this, I had high hopes for our next Margaritaville, which we would find in...
the city of New York, home of the Times Square Margaritaville and our final Margaritaville Resort. They somehow managed to fit the flip-flop in this one. And hey, check out this view. That's pretty good. We were joined at this Margaritaville with my best pals from college, Katie and Devin. And I'm not sure what I expected from the Times Square Margaritaville, but I for sure did not expect this. They had a giant replica of the Statue of Liberty holding a margarita. It was playing music, there were stingrays and lights. Oh shoot, shoot. This is kind of cool. This is kind of cool. Katie and Devin were having a good time. It was a fancy Margaritaville, so our food was good. Oh God, I'm confused. Do I like this place? No, 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 no. It's just the margaritas. Jimmy's trying to play tricks on me. That's what this is. This is just a trick. But hey, alcohol is alcohol. I'm here with friends and we're here in New York, so might as well have a good time. Making fools on GPS. Brand new mood, like he's still fresh. Don't let it fool ya. I get checks. I'm in vest and half and blowing all the rest, Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, my head. Oh, my head. I woke up that morning hungover and realized, oh my god, there were still more Margaritavilles to go. Although now that I think about it, that Times Square one was kind of cool. I mean, no, that that can't be right. There were no animatronics, no safari fries. Is it possible that Margarita... Well, whatever, let's get out of here. Goodbye, giant flip-flop. See you never again. It was time to hit the road. From New York City, we'd be driving all the way up to Syracuse, New York for another Margaritaville. And during a stop, I noticed that something was happening to my facial hair. Not sure what that's about, but before we reached Syracuse, we would meet up with a special friend along the way. My best friend, Tucker Keen. Eddie. Hey man, we go so way back, you know? Yeah. Good to see you. It's just, uh, it's yeah. really sorry with you. Yeah, I know. Fucking asshole. For the rest of our drive to Syracuse, I actually rode with Tucker. See ya, Eddie. Should I show them the condition in which your car is? <laughs> My car is great. I'm just a nest. You're in. <laughs> you know, it'd be funny if Eddie and I got into a car accident. <laughs> that would be funny. And on your video, you could be like, Eddie fucking rear-ended us. It was such his fault. And <laughs> Eventually, we arrived in Syracuse at the Destiny Mall. This was a really large mall, like one of those crazy Mall of America type sized ones. And it actually was the first time that we would go to a Margaritaville in a mall. I didn't know they did that. I thought that was Rainforest Cafe's thing. This was one of the more depressing Margaritavilles we had been to. The blender at the front was in pieces. Tucker started investigating inside it. And when we sat down, half of the restaurant did not have people in it. And it was Saturday. Another margarita down the hatch, and the food was all right. It's probably one of the lower ranked margaritavilles if I had to choose. But that wasn't the only location we'd be going to today. So we waved goodbye to Tucker and his wonderful wife, Emma. See you later. And began our drive to the one and only Canadian margaritaville in Niagara, Ontario. All we had to do was just get through border patrol, and we did on the first try. We've gotten better at crossing the border. Obviously, Niagara is where one of the best rainforest cafes is located. So I changed into an outfit to try to convince Eddie to let us go. Go. All right, Eddie, I'm ready. Ted, we're not. We're going to the Margaritaville. We can't even go just once. So without stopping at the Rainforest Cafe, fuck, we headed to Canada's Margaritaville. What I didn't know was how much this location would affect me. We got sat down right next to a giant projector, which was playing more Jimmy Buffett propaganda. And normally I'd be frustrated with this, but then something shocking caught my eye. Who are you? I was blessed with a vision of a pirate mascot in this location wearing a Margaritaville shirt. What was the meaning of this? Did Margaritaville have a mascot and I didn't know? And was I falling in love with this mascot? No, 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 that's ridiculous. <laughs> there, no, there's no way I was falling in love with this pirate mascot. That's crazy. I didn't know how to process these feelings I was having. And before I had a chance to try, another volcano alert. But this time, a giant animatronic bottle of tequila comes out of nowhere and begins pouring tequila into the giant Margaritaville blender. They have animatronics. Tronics too? Wait, 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 what's going on? The menu was special as well. I got a spicy margarita and it was really good. We got poutine as well and it was delicious. I could feel something stirring inside me, something I hadn't felt in a while. Was it possible? And as we exited this Canadian Margaritaville, I began to peruse the gift shop and I saw this. A giant Niagara Falls Margaritaville glass. I must resist, I must resist. Sorry. Sorry, got a little excited there. We finished the night by enjoying a fireworks show over Niagara Falls, and man, Canada, you have done something to me for sure. Tomorrow, we begin our journey west for our final five Margaritavilles.
The next stop on this trip was in Cleveland, Ohio. And while this Margaritaville was admittedly not in the prettiest location, something about these margaritas was tasting better, I think. The food was tasty, and I left there with a smile on my face. This is weird. I'm gonna have to see a therapist after this because I don't know what's happening to me. After Cleveland, we drove 350 miles to just outside Chicago, Illinois, where that night we'd crash at Eddie's mom's place. Because tomorrow, we'd be heading into the city. As we commuted into Chicago, these feelings I was having were not going away. Was I going through a metamorphosis too? Something still was stirring inside my soul, but I hadn't figured it out yet. When we got into Chicago, we met up with Eddie's cooler and more charming and sexier brother, Tony. Eddie, this isn't for you. And we also were joined by the illustrious Danny Gonzalez, who seemed very ready to go to Margaritaville. This location had the vibes of an old Chicago bar and grill. Danny and Tony seemed to be having a good time. And again, so was I. The margaritas were good. And I ordered more fried food. Eddie seemed to be having like a stomach ache or something, but I'm sure he'll come back around. Although Danny got a little bit worried when the volcano alert came on the TV. Okay. Is that real? Laura, get in the basement. Get the dogs and get in the basement. Just go! Oh, never mind. No, it's just a goof. And they started playing Margaritaville. That song isn't so bad. So we left that restaurant and surprisingly, I was feeling pretty good. So we headed to the bean. Don't touch the bean. I, I promise you don't touch the bean. Said our goodbyes to Tony and Danny and prepared to head to our next Margaritaville because we weren't finished yet. I love the summer rain coming down on everyone. On day 20, we departed Chicago and began our drive to Bloomington, Minnesota for our third to last Margaritaville. My feelings on this restaurant were as cluttered as ever, and this became even more apparent as we reflected on the trip thus far. Man, especially because this trip is longer, I am really getting tired of these, man. Just kind of glad, you know, that we can enjoy being a little miserable with somebody, you know, to not be alone in that. I don't know, man. I mean, I was initially, like, really against them and kind of suspicious of Jimmy, but things have happened, and I'm- What do you mean, things have happened? You know, I don't I don't mind it as much. Are you not tired just, of drinking sweet cocktails almost every day? Well, they've got fun names. If I handed you a vial with a skull and crossbones on it, and I said, drink this, it's called silly juice. You would taste it? Well, I don't know. Maybe it could be like a little... And if I said, drink this, this is poison, what would you do? Uh, Are you thinking about it? Well, I don't know. I Are don't you know. Thinking I, about it? If I said drink can this you just poison? give me some time to think. Well, what if it's like a little character? What do you mean? Like, what if it's a little character, like a mascot, that came up and said, "Hey, try this. Try this poison." I'd give it a thought. That's not good, dude. It's respectful to the character. You don't need to respect somebody who's telling you to drink poison. God, dude, what? I just don't. I don't understand what's going on up there. We've only got three more to do. Maybe I'll figure it out by the time we do those last ones. But I mean, like, I mean, what? Where, 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 Forty-three minutes. What time is it? It's five. It's five. It's five o'clock right now. Okay. Are you good to drive? Yeah, no, no. I'm that's a little bit weird. So we finished our drive, arriving at the Mall of America in Bloomington, Minnesota at five o'clock. And after a little bit of searching, we finally made it to the Margaritaville at five o'clock. What we didn't expect was for this Margaritaville to be across the hall from the Rainforest Cafe. You can see it in the background of my last video. We had been standing right across from this restaurant a year before, completely unaware we'd be returning here to go to the same spot to go to the restaurant across the hall. Entering this Margaritaville, my conflicted feelings were reached their breaking point. I was enjoying myself. How could this be possible without the attributes of the Rainforest Cafe? I began to consume, and this food was tasting so good. I was enjoying myself. The environment was wonderful and tropical and stupid, too. Another margarita at this hour? But, but what time is it? Five o'clock? No. No, that, that can't be right. It was it was just five o'clock. It was just five o'clock. Oh God, I'm realizing it now. It's not just five o'clock somewhere. Oh God, it's five o'clock everywhere. What's happening to me? What a stupid phrase. It just justifies drinking at inappropriate time. Just say that you want to drink at 1230 in the afternoon. This place is so silly, so ridiculous. How could something like it exist? I reached for my final semblance of sanity, the cheeseburger in paradise, and the question still rattled in my mind as loud as a crashing wave. What is Margaritaville? Oh my god. Oh my god. I figured it out. I, I think I figured it out. I had been wandering in the dark. 
It was with me this whole time. It, it had been this whole trip. I can't believe I didn't see it before. I had been so blind to reality. The theme, it was all around me. In the air, in the sky, in this kooky character. Hell, even in this roller coaster. It was all so clear to me now. I finally understood what I actually like about themed restaurants. I finally understood why I love the Rainforest Cafe. And as a result, why I think I love Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville too. It wasn't about animatronics or safari fries or gorillas at all. A themed restaurant was so much more and yet so simple. It just had to be stupid. And it was so, so stupid. And so I realized Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville was a themed restaurant, at least by my definition. I could finally truly enjoy this restaurant just like I could the Rainforest Cafe. And lucky for me, well, we still had two more. On day 21, we began our 690-mile drive from Bloomington to Tulsa, Oklahoma. This was a long drive, but the joy I was feeling for my second favorite themed restaurant, Margaritaville, powered me through it. Eventually, we'd reach Margaritaville number 21 at the River Spirit Casino in Tulsa. And this is also where we'd see our very first Margaritaville Casino, which basically means island-themed gambling and quotes on the walls encouraging that mindset. I'm gonna conveniently ignore this portion of the language we're using here around gambling, Jimmy, because I think we're on the same page for once and I don't want to ruin this thing we got going on, okay? This Margaritaville would be our final fancy Margaritaville. Everything we ate here tasted good. And you know I'm getting the poke nachos again. Yummy yum yum in my tummy tum tum. That's what that's what I say. That's what I've always said. We were graced with another volcano alert in which this time the margarita would come out of the volcano and waterfall into the giant blender. Probably a lot of minerals in that margarita. But despite the dinner and a show we were receiving from Margaritaville today, Eddie was not showing the same enthusiasm for Margaritaville anymore. So the next day, I decided to kindly and maturely speak to him about it. So Eddie, when are you gonna change your name? What? When are you gonna change your name? What are you being tight, man? Oh, I don't know. I just thought, you know, based on the way you're acting, maybe you'd be changing your name to Mr. Hates Fun, and last name Margaritaville. What, I, I hate fun for just being a little bit exhausted? I don't understand what- I don't know, you tell me, man. I got to where you were I at. I was suspicious of Jimmy. Yeah. And then I opened up my heart to the margaritas, and now all of a sudden you start hating the margaritavilles? What's the deal, man? So I just want to start off. I don't think whatever place you're in is where I was at all during the trip. Uh, to be honest, honestly, I want to ask you, you weren't enjoying it when we had like good locations or when we started it, when we were just kind of having a couple of drinks. I just didn't get it. I just don't understand how we go to more and more of these restaurants uh -huh. and you like it more. And to be honest, you get weird. What do you mean I get weird? All I would need to do is hold up a mirror to you saying that. Well, unfortunately for you, there's no mirrors in cars, Eddie. Jesus. I just don't understand why we can't be on the same page, okay? We go on the entire trip where we go to Rainforest Cafe. You hate it. You're, you're miserable the whole time. And then we go on this Margaritaville trip. You're loving it, you're loving it. I don't know what's going on, but then I start to like it and I'm seeing maybe the magic is in the sauce. Maybe Jimmy has something going on. I thought that maybe we'd understand ourselves for once, but now, so. I ask you, Eddie, why can we not get on the same- Because it's who we are, Ted. Oh. It's who we are. We're different people. Okay? You would eat at a restaurant that would give you food poisoning multiple times if there was just a little animatronic to keep you company. Okay? And I like to complain about things sometimes. Alright, is that so bad? It's who we are. Well then I guess that's it. Yeah. I guess that's it. You don't have to say it twice. I, guess I said that's yeah! It. You said it a third time. Fuck. Was it true? Were Eddie and I destined to never be on the same page about these restaurants? I racked my brain, trying to think of a way to bring them back to the light. There was only one location left, so I had to think fast. And that's when I realized there was still a chance to save him. The last possible thing that could get Eddie on my side once again. Margaritaville's homemade key lime pie. A dessert infused with the soul of the original Margaritaville in Key West. It was the only thing I could do to bring the spirit of Jimmy Buffett back to young Burback's heart. And what a perfect place for our final Margaritaville. Las Vegas, where the seeds were sown for this entire trip. I was ready to implement my plan and bring Eddie back onto my side. However, it seemed like Eddie had done some soul searching as well because he had a surprise for me. Stand right there. Ted, we are headed to the final Margaritaville, but what do you say we make one pit stop first? 
Do you want to go to the Rainforest Cafe and get one yeah, drink? Yeah, I do. <laughs> That's right. Before our final Margaritaville, Eddie and I were going back one final time to the Rainforest Cafe. And it was so, so beautiful. Hello, giant pillar of giant fruit. Hello, animatronic gorilla. Hello, Tracy Tree, you weirdo. Hello, fake starry rainforest sky. And hello, thunderstorms. Oh my god, I miss the thunderstorms. It was beautiful and we appropriately got Cheetoritas and they were so, so bad, but so good at the same time. I could feel Eddie and I coming together again, even if it wasn't in the way that I thought we would. So we said our goodbyes to Rainforest Cafe and kept going because we had one final stop to make, our final Margaritaville. So we entered that restaurant. We sat once again in a boat design booth. We raised our margaritas in celebration. And there it was, in all its glory, a key lime pie. And with one single bite of that tropically infused dessert, we realized what we had done. Oh yeah, we did. We had done it again. Every Margaritaville in the United States and Canada. Through the trials and tribulations, the rainforests and the beaches, we had traveled across an entire continent twice just to go to some themed restaurants. We completed two road trips for the stupidest reason ever. And you know, despite our differences, we had done it together. Io ti darò tutto l'amore che ora ho, perché sei solo tu, l'amore.